probably thought I forgot that it was Fairy Tale Friday. I would never forget you. Te amo. Let's go down the hall. Keep it down. My son might be sleeping. And we will read a story. And then look. There's one of my kitty cats. Where is he? Maybe. Maybe the kitty cat will read a story with us. Come on. Come on. Come with me. We will read a bedtime story. Here's where the magic happens. The office of Ice Kush with various awards my children have won. And then my library of books all over. Look at the wonderful books. But I know what book you want. I know what book you want. But let's see my little kitty. There's a Sarah. Sarah. It's nice that she's in here. She will probably like this story because today we will read from my big book of cat stories, a deluxe golden book. If you look, it was actually my brother's book going all the way back to 1969. That's my brother, Derek. Beautiful illustrations. So what story shall we read? Oh, I know one. The Cat and the Sick Chicken. One, uh, I'm sorry, The Cat and the Sick Chicken, told by Marie Ponceau. Oh, here comes my kitty cat. She's gonna knock over the iPad. I, I don't think I could have even play it. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry for that interruption, children, but this cat is really being a bit of a pain. I don't know if... <laughs> All right. Move along, kitty. Move along. It's story time. All right. The Cat and the Sick Chicken Told by Marie Ponceau. One April afternoon... Mrs. Chicken came down with a very severe cold. Her neighbor, Mr. Cat, heard about it. He set out at once to visit her. How are you, neighbor? he asked. Colds are nasty things at this time of year. Can I be of help? I can keep you company or read you something cheerful or give you useful advice. All the while he was thinking, Perhaps, if she is very weak, she'll faint or at least fall asleep in her chair. You never know if she does. His whiskers quivered hungrily at the very thought. Or perhaps, he thought, she might want a steadying neighborly arm to lean on if she has a dizzy spell. If she does, his ears snapped up stiff and straight at the very idea. On the other hand, he thought, if she feels terribly upset, I know how to calm her by popping her quickly into my sack after tying her up neatly with the butcher's cord of the very best quality. His tail twitched the air impatiently at the very idea. Mrs. Chicken sat bundled up in a huge quilt of many colors, 
Only her head and neck emerged from it. These she had covered with a scarf and a shawl in case of drafts. Her cousin, Miss Quail, had set a bowl of steaming water on the floor beside her chair. She was about to warm her cold feet in it. Mrs. Chicken knew Mr. Cat only too well. She rightly did not trust him. Though her head happened to be congested by a spring cold, her wits, oh, spring, a spring cold. That reminds me, class, today is the vernal equinox. We'll get 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. Happy vernal equinox, the first day of spring. Though her head happened to be congested by a spring cold, her wits were as sharp as ever. Wings drooping and eyelids half shut, looking far more feeble than she felt, she concentrated on how to get rid of her tricky visitor. She heard him ask, Is the fever getting worse? Suppose I examine your throat. Just shut your eyes and say, Ah! Thank you, no, snapped she with more energy than he expected. He sighed. Your health is very important after all, he went on. You can be frank with an old neighbor like me. What can I do for you? Just say the word. In any event, I'll spend the night watching over your rest. It's the least I can do. Silently, the chicken shivered among her feathers. No matter what, she was determined to oust this eager volunteer. Kind of you, she croaked in a weak voice. But really, the only thing that ever does me any good is a nice hot mustard foot bath. I feel so feeble all of a sudden. Would you be so good as to pour me some more boiling water from the kettle? Mr. Cat was delighted to do as she bid. Under cover of the dense steam, Mrs. Chicken caught the cat's tail with a side swipe of her wing and plunged it deep into the boiling water. Howling, Mr. Cat leaped straight up and fled. He didn't even say goodbye, though he was usually careful of his manners. Thank you, dear fellow. So thoughtful. Not everyone would test the water for a poor sick creature that way. Kind, kind, Mr. Cat, trilled Mrs. Chicken, laughing to herself as he disappeared. The end. Well, I hope you liked your story. Good night, Sentry.